Good morning and welcome to St. Catherine of Siena. As always, we're so happy to see you again. We want to extend a special welcome to the members of our parish family who are watching via our live stream. Let's take a moment to greet them by waving hello. Folks at home, if you're logged into YouTube, please share your joys as well as any requests for prayers and in the chat box and we'll be happy to share them. As we begin our liturgy, let us call to mind those in our community who are in need of special prayer. As we begin our celebration, let us stand and sing together, lift up your hearts, number 624 in your gather book.
Good morning and continued happy Easter to all of you. Our pastor is off at the Boston Marathon, and I'll give you two choices. He's running in the race, <laughs> or he's pretending to be an official at the finish line. <laughs> and one of those two, you can just throw out. <laughs> Hopefully he's enjoying himself while he's up there. He's done it for years and years and years. So. While we celebrate our pastor on vacation, we also celebrate the great gift that God has won for us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we gather around our altar in the midst of this Easter season, let us take a moment to call to mind God's loving forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, <clears throat> you lived among us to show us the way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you died so that we may live forever. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you rose and walked among us to inspire our hope in eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. People exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adop adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You deny the holy and righteous one and ask that a murderer be released to you the author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, 
just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. shine upon us you put gladness into my heart as soon as I lie down I fall peacefully asleep for you alone O Lord Bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Open the scriptures to us, make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah,
My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. So our gospel today reminds me of an old golf joke. It was about a guy named John who was an avid golfer and a man of great faith, but he was growing old. So one day he asked his wife, do you think I'll be able to play golf in heaven? She suggested that he pray on it. That next Sunday, John was doing just that when an angel suddenly appeared to him and said, John, God has heard your prayer and has sent me to answer it. Do you want the good news or the bad news first? Somewhat shaken, John managed to compose himself and say, I'll take the good news first. So the angel told him, the good news is that heaven has the most beautiful golf courses in all of creation. So yes, you will be able to play golf there. Wow, John said, that's great. What bad news could there possibly be? Well, the angel said, you have a tea time for 9 a.m. tomorrow. I've had to listen to that four times. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Now, you might be wondering how this joke is is at all relevant to our gospel today. But if you hang in there for a moment, I'll try and make it clear. But it starts with the recognition that our gospel writers, especially Luke and John, have pointed out something really cool that's going on with Jesus' resurrection. And it goes beyond the obvious but powerful fact that he's risen. Because what these gospel writers are also keen on showing us is that Jesus has risen with his physical human body. He's not a spirit or a vision. He's not a dream. Jesus is physically present. He can be touched. He can eat baked fish. He has a flesh and blood body. And it's a body that has somehow been made new. It's Jesus, but he's different in some way. Different enough that Mary Magdalene on Easter morning didn't recognize him and thought that he was the gardener. Different enough that as he walked with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, they thought they were walking with a stranger. 
but not so different that ultimately Mary wouldn't recognize him when he called her by name, or that the disciples wouldn't know him when he finally broke bread with them. So Jesus had a body that was new in some ways, but recognizable in others. And all of this highlights a very important fact, that Jesus didn't shed his skin the first chance he got. He held on to one of the things which uniquely makes each one of us us, our flesh and blood bodies, which is a big clue as to what the afterlife is going to be like, meaning that when we're resurrected, we'll have our bodies too. And I think that's a really big deal. And it's also where my golf joke comes into play. Because for me, heaven has always included the possibility that I'm going to be able to keep playing golf even after I die. And the only way that's going to happen is if I have a physical body. Which is, by the way, it's the reason that I bought this book. This is some of the deep theological reading that I did in preparation for this homily. It's titled, Will There Be Golf in Heaven? A Biblical Perspective on Golf in Eternity by Matthew Herbert. So you know that this is one of my favorite all-time books. And it's a favorite of mine because it gives me hope. And it should give you hope too. That you can physically do the things you love or dream about in heaven which is why I wanted to preach on this topic today. Because I don't think people reflect much on this. Or even worse, they don't believe it because they can't imagine their bodies being resurrected. They somehow have this idea that our bodies don't matter, that it's our spirit or soul that's the most important thing. It's a way of thinking that comes from an old Greek and Gnostic philosophies that the soul is immortal and is merely imprisoned or encased by the body. And that after our death, our souls float off to heaven like some kind of a helium balloon, while our body, which was just a shell all along, stays behind to rot. All of which is a heresy that our church has been trying to stamp out since the earliest days of Christianity. But apparently not with much success, as recent polls show that only one-third of all Christians believe that after they die, their physical bodies will someday be resurrected. And maybe that's because the idea of a resurrected body flies in the face of modern science. After all, how can cells that have decayed and disintegrated and become worm food ever be revived and reconstructed into our original bodies? Or maybe it's because a resurrected body challenges our imagination. We can't quite comprehend the process. When a person dies at the age of 88, is the resurrected body that of an 88-year-old or that of their 26-year-old self or something different? Same in the reverse for an infant that has died. Do they remain an infant in heaven or are they resurrected as an adult? Or what about someone who's born without an arm or loses a leg in an accident? What do they look like in the afterlife? Or maybe, deep in our hearts, we simply resist the notion of our own powerful and transformative resurrection because we believe that's something reserved only for Jesus, Mary, or the saints. Perhaps really deep down, we don't think we're worthy of such a miracle. But rejecting this notion of our bodily resurrection has always been at odds with the teachings of our Catholic Church. In fact, most Sundays we stand here and profess through our third century Nicene Creed, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. I look forward to it. In other words, I can't wait to be reunited with my body. The Council of Lyons in 1274 reaffirmed this when it said, we believe in the true resurrection of the flesh we now possess, meaning our flesh will rise, 
It won't be something else. Somehow, some way, it'll be our flesh because it's an integral part of who we are. Now, as I mentioned before, these heavenly bodies of ours will be different. So it's no surprise that in one of the letters of, to, of St. Paul to the Corinthians, someone asked St. Paul, how are the dead raised? What kind of body will they come back in? And what does St. Paul say? That our heavenly bodies will be in the same image as our earthly ones. It's just that while our earthly bodies can become weak or broken or grow old and die, our heavenly bodies won't. They will always be powerful and glorious. Joni Erickson Tata, a Christian writer and radio host, who became a quadriplegic at the age of 17 after a diving accident, noted the same thing when she said, somewhere in my broken and paralyzed body, there's a seed of what I shall become. My paralysis makes what I'm to become all the more grand when you compare my withered, useless legs against what will be my splendid, resurrected legs. I'm convinced that if there are mirrors in heaven, the image I'll see will unmistakably be Joni, but it'll be a better, brighter, and stronger Joni. Maybe that's why we wouldn't initially recognize someone in their resurrected body. If you met me as my 26-year-old self, with a fuller head of hair, a little taller, 20 pounds lighter, stronger, and in better shape, you probably wouldn't recognize me initially either. Young people, there's a website called Children Asking God Questions. There, a seven-year-old girl named Jane captured everything that I'm talking about today when she wrote, Dear God, instead of letting people die and having to make new bodies, why don't you just let them keep the ones they have now? Well, young people, that is exactly what our church teaches that God will do. Except those bodies that we'll keep will be the very best version of the ones that we have now. My brothers and sisters, the caveat to all this is that while we should hope in what we will become in heaven, we shouldn't be too eager to get there. We have a purpose in this world, things we need to learn from our brokenness, suffering, and aging or things that others may need to learn from us. That's why our church teaches that all life is sacred. And besides, our time here on earth is only a millisecond in length compared to the eternity that we'll spend in heaven. So we ought to look forward to this resurrection of ours, but we also need to have the patience to understand that it will always be in God's time and not ours. But in the interim, let's rejoice in knowing that our current bodies are like an old car that doesn't always function smoothly, eventually starts breaking down, and one day will stop working altogether, whereas our heavenly bodies will be like a Royals Royce that never needs servicing. It all reminds me of Paul Azinger, a highly successful professional golfer who won the PGA Golf Championship back in 1993. At the age of 33, he was diagnosed with cancer, and he struggled mightily with that, until his good friend Larry Moody, a fellow professional golfer and a devout Christian, said this to him, Zinger, we're not in the land of the living, going to the land of the dying. We're in the land of the dying, trying to get to the land of the living. So let's never forget that the great news of our gospel today is that we've been given the gift of eternal life, a gift that will ultimately unite us with God and each other in profound love. That's the most important thing. But along with that great news is the good news that we'll be fully ourselves in heaven, our most perfect selves in both body and in soul. We need to believe that when Christ saves us, he'll save all of us, including our bodies. And what a redemptive moment that is for all of creation, 
that our risen Lord doesn't cast us off, but instead makes us new. And new in a way that will allow me to maybe, hopefully, someday, break par on one of those beautiful courses in heaven. So thanks be to God for that, and amen. amen. Oh, come on, amen. amen. And let us pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, received by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come and judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. In glorious hope, we bring these prayers of needs to the one who created all of us. Our response is, grant us new life. For the church, may we continually look for and recognize the presence of Christ in our midst. We pray, grant, grant us, us new life. life. For our world, as we celebrate the Easter season, surrounded by signs of new life, may we work together to nurture and sustain our natural environment. We pray, grant, grant us, us new, new life. life. For the continuation of the mission Jesus sent his disciples on, including the women of Transfiguration tra traveling to Bonneville, Kentucky to serve the poor this week. May their ministry be blessed and their travel safe. We pray, grant, grant us, us new life. life. For peace in our hearts, in our families, neighborhoods, country, and throughout the world, so that we might focus efforts on providing for the common good, we pray, grant, grant us, us new, new life. life. For our active military service members, may they be protected from harm and know that we support them and value their service. And may their loved ones receive our support to meet the daily challenges they face in their absence. We pray, grant, grant us, us new, new life. life. For all those written in our intention book and for those who have died, including Patsy Carosa, whose funeral was celebrated this weekend, and Jack Garrity, Patricia Dietz, Donna Goldbach, Paul Del Vecchio, Mary Palmier, and Marion Palmer, for whom this weekend's masses are offered. May they rest in the enduring peace of Christ. We pray. Grant, grant us, us new, new life. life. Loving God, we bring these prayers up in full hope of hopefulness, and we ask you to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice of bread and wine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Creator. May the Lord set the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for the resurrection of all God's holy church. Receive, O Lord, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, the universe cast down is renewed, the integrity of life is restored to Christ in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people, exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and angelic hosts sing together the glory of your acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, shared it with his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, shared it with his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered in one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Salvatore our Bishop, and all who minister in the church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with St. Catherine, St. Lawrence, St. Maria Goretti, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our brother, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look, not in our sins, but in the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of peace. Peace, Eric. Thank you. God bless. Peace, ladies. God's peace. Peace, peace. <laughs> <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring all of us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Look with kindness on your people, O Lord, and grant that those who that, uh, that those you were pleased to renew in eternal mysteries may attain their flesh, the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Raffle ticket sales begin this weekend for the beautifully handcrafted chest created by our parishioner Bob Gruber and on display in our gathering space in the back. Tickets are $25 and will support the restoration of our stable patrimony. Only 200 tickets are available, so don't miss your chance to win and buy your tickets today. Drawing for the winning ticket will be held after the 1045 Mass on May 19th. Many thanks to Bob for his generous contribution. Join Dr. Joe Kelly for the Spirituality of Eucharist, Eucharist series starting this Tuesday from 7 to 8.30 p.m. at Transfiguration's PLC Double Room. Rediscover the profound significance of the Eucharist amidst the church's call for renewal in understanding the central aspect of our faith. Join us in celebrating Earth Day beginning on Friday, April 19th <clears throat> at 7 p.m. in the Parish Life Center at Transfiguration when we will be hosting a movie night featuring Sir David Attenborough's A Life on Our Planet. Then on Sunday, April 21st, 1 to 4 p.m., there will be a tree planting at ABC Woods. RSVP and details are in the bulletin. Next weekend, April 20th and 21st, we will be collecting donations for the Honeywai Falls Fish Food Pantry. Please check the bulletin for their special needs and leave donations at the front entrance. Also next weekend, we will be joined by Serenity House for our spring outreach weekend presentation. Serenity House provides specialized care for the terminally ill and their families. And one more announcement that didn't quite make the list. Tomorrow night, Men's Fellowship is meeting over at Transfiguration in the Education Building at 6 o'clock. I invite any of the men that are interested to join us for some food, beverage, and we have Bethany House coming to talk about the mission work they do and how, as men, we might be able to help them with that mission. So I invite you all to be there. The Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God continue to bless us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And we close the celebration by singing together, Alleluia is our song. The words will be projected.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.